Live from San Jose, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering DataWorks Summit 2018. Brought to you by Hortonworks. Welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of DataWorks here in San Jose, California. I'm your host, along with my co-host, James Kobielis. We're joined by Tendu Yogurchu. She is the CTO of SyncSort. Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE, for returning to theCUBE, I should say. Thank you, Rebecca and uh, James. It's always a pleasure to be here. So you, you've been on theCUBE before, and the last time you were talking about uh, SyncSort's growth. So can you give, us, give our viewers a company update, where you are now? Absolutely. SyncSort has seen uh, uh, extraordinary growth within the last uh, year. We tripled our revenue, doubled our employees, and expanded the product portfolio significantly. Uh, because of this uh, phenomenal growth that we have seen, uh, we also embarked on a new initiative uh, with uh, refreshing our brand. Uh, we uh, rebranded uh, and uh, this was necessitated by the fact that we have such a uh, broad uh, portfolio of products and uh, we are actually uh, showing our uh, new brand here, articulating the value our products bring with optimizing existing infrastructure, assuring data security and availability, and advancing the data by integrating into next generation analytics platforms. So it's very exciting times in terms of uh, SyncSort's uh, uh, growth. So the last time you were on the show was pre-GDPR, but, but we were talking before the cameras were rolling and you were, you were explaining the kinds of adoption you're seeing and, and, and what in this new era you're seeing from customers and hearing from customers. Can you tell our viewers a little bit about it? Uh, when we were uh, discussing last time, I talked about four megatrends we are seeing, and those uh, megatrends uh, were uh, primarily driven by the advanced business and operation analytics, data governance, cloud, streaming, and uh, uh, data science, artificial intelligence. And we talked uh, and uh, we really uh, uh, made a lot of uh, announcement and uh, focus on the use cases around data governance, uh, primarily helping our customers uh, for the GDPR, Global Data Protection Regulation initiatives and uh, how uh, we can create that visibility in the enterprise uh, through uh, the data uh, by security and lineage and uh, delivering trust data sets. Now uh, we are talking uh, about the cloud primarily. And uh, the keynotes, uh, this event, and our focus is around cloud, primarily driven by, again, the use cases, right? How the businesses are adapting uh, to the new era. One of the challenges that we see with our enterprise customers and uh, uh, our over 7,000 customers, uh, by the way, is uh, the uh, ability to future-proof their applications because this is a very rapidly changing uh, stack. We have seen the keynotes talking about the importance of how do you connect your existing infrastructure with the future modern next generation platforms? How do you future proof the platform, uh, make it agnostic uh, about the, uh, whether it's Amazon, Microsoft, or Google Cloud, whether it's uh, on-premise in uh, legacy uh, platforms today, that uh, the data has to be available in the next generation platforms. So the challenge we are seeing is uh, uh, how do we keep the data fresh? How do we create that abstraction uh, that the uh, applications are future-proofed? Because uh, organizations, even financial services customers, banking, insurance, they now have at least one uh, cluster running in the public cloud and uh, there's private implementations, hybrid becomes uh, the new standard. Uh, so our focus and most recent uh, announcements have been around really helping our customers with real-time resilient uh, change in the capture, keeping the data fresh, feeding into the downstream applications with the streaming and messaging uh, data frames, uh, for example, Kafka, Amazon Kinesis, as well as uh, keeping the persistent stores uh, and the uh, Hadoop data lake uh, on-premise or in the cloud fresh. Put you into great alignment with your partner Hortonworks. So, Tendu, I wonder if we are here at DataWorks, since Hortonworks is show, if you can break out for our, our viewers, what is the nature, the levels of your relationship, your partnership with Hortonworks, and how the SyncSort portfolio 
plays with HDP 3.0, with Hortonworks data flow, the data plane services, at a high level. Uh, uh, absolutely. So we have been a, a partner, a long time partner with Hortonworks, and uh, a couple of years back, we strengthened our partnership. Hortonworks uh, is uh, reselling uh, SyncSort, and we have actually a, a prescriptive solution for uh, uh, Hadoop and ETL onboarding uh, in Hadoop jointly. And uh, it's very complementary, uh, our strategy is very complementary because uh, what Hortonworks is trying uh, <laughs> and achieving is creating that abstraction and uh, future proofing and interaction consistency, Arun referred as uh, this morning, yes. across the platform, whether it's on-premise or in the cloud or across multiple clouds. Yes. We are uh, providing the application, data application layer consistency and future proofing on top of the platform, leveraging uh, the, uh, uh, the tools in the platform for orchestration, uh, integrating with the HTP, certifying with Ranger, HTP, all of the tools, uh, data flow uh, uh, and uh, Atlas, of course, uh, for lineage. Mm. So the theme of this conference is ideas, insights, and innovation. And you, as a partner of Hortonworks, can you describe what it, what it means for you to be at this conference? What kinds of community and, and deep, deepening existing relationships, forming new ones, can you talk about what happens here? Um, this is uh, one of the major uh, events uh, around data, and it's data works as opposed to uh, 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 being more specific to the Hadoop itself, right? Because the stack is evolving and uh, uh, data challenges are evolving. Uh, for us, uh, it means uh, really uh, the interactions with the customers, the organizations, and the partners here. Because uh, the dynamics of uh, the use cases uh, is uh, also evolving. Uh, for example, uh, data lake implementations uh, started in US and uh, we started uh, EMEA, European organizations, uh, moving to streaming, uh, data streaming applications faster than US. Uh, why is that? Yeah. Why, are they, why are the Europeans moving faster to streaming than we are in North America? Is there uh, I, I think a couple of uh, different uh, things might uh, participate. Uh, the open source is really enabling organizations uh, to move fast. Uh, when the data lake initiative started, uh, we have seen a little bit uh, 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 slow uh, start in the Europe, but more experimentation with the open source stack. Mm -hmm. And uh, by that, uh, the more transformative use cases uh, started uh, really mm -hmm. evolving. Like how do I uh, manage uh, interactions of the users with the remote controls as they are uh, watching live TV mm -hmm. type of transformative okay. use cases became important. And as uh, we move to the transformative use cases, streaming uh, is also very critical uh, because uh, lots of data is uh, available and being able to keep uh, uh, the cloud data stores as well as uh, on-premise data uh, stores and downstream applications uh, with fresh data becomes important. We, in fact, in uh, early June announced that SyncSort now is uh, part of Microsoft's uh, one commercial partner program. Mm -hmm. uh, with that, uh, our integrate uh, solutions uh, with data integration and data quality are uh, Azure uh, Gold certified and Azure ready. We are in COSAL uh, mm. uh, agreement and uh, we are helping jointly uh, a lot of customers uh, moving data and uh, workloads uh, to Azure and keeping those data stores across the platforms in sync. Right. Uh, so uh, lots of uh, exciting things. I mean, th there's a lot of happening uh, with the application space. There's also lots of still happening connected to the governance uh, cases that we have seen, uh, uh, feeding security and IT operations data into Again, modern day next generation analytics platforms is uh, mm -hmm. key, uh, whether it's Splunk, whether it's Elastic uh, as part of the uh, Hadoop stack. Uh, so we are uh, uh, still focused on governance uh, as part of this multi-cloud and uh, on-premise cloud implementations as well. We in fact launched our uh, Iron Stream for IBM I product uh, to help customers not just uh, making this data available from mainframes, but also from IBM I into uh, Splunk, Elastic, and other security information and event management uh, uh, platforms. Uh, and today we announced uh, workflow optimization across uh, on-premise and multi-cloud and mm. cloud uh, platforms. So lots of uh, 
lots of uh, focus across to optimize, assure, and integrate the portfolio of products, helping customers with the business use cases. That's really our focus as we innovate organically and also uh, acquire technologies and uh, solutions. What are the problems we are solving and how we can help our customers with the business and operation analytics uh, targeting those uh, mega trends around uh, data governance, cloud, streaming, and uh, also data science. What yeah. is the biggest trend, do you think, that is that is sort of driving driving all of these changes? As you said, the data is evolving, the use cases are evolving. What is it that, that is keeping your customers up at night? Um, it, it's still, uh, uh, right now it's still governance mm -hmm. keeping them up at night uh, because uh, this evolving architecture is also making uh, governance more complex, right? Uh, you have, uh, if we are looking at financial services, banking, insurance, healthcare, there are lots of existing infrastructures on main data, critical, mission critical data stores on mainframe, IBMI, in addition to uh, this uh, gravity of data changing and lots of data with the online businesses generated uh, in the cloud. So how to govern, and govern that also while optimizing and making those data stores available for next generation analytics be, uh, makes the governance uh, quite complex. So that really keeps uh, and creates a lot of opportunity for the community, right? All of us here to address those uh, challenges. Because it sounds to me, I'm hearing Splunk, and that's machine data, I think of the Internet of Things and sensor grids. I'm hearing the IBM mainframes, that's transactional data, that's your customer data and so forth. It seems like much of this data that you're describing that customers are trying to you know, cleanse and consolidate and provide strict governance on is absolutely essential for them to drive more artificial intelligence into end applications and mobile devices that are being used to drive the customer experience. Do you see more of your customers using your tools to massage the data sets as it were uh, that then data scientists then use to build and train their models for deployment into edge applications? Is that uh, an emerging area where your customers are deploying SyncSort? Thank you for asking that question. It's a Absolutely. complex question. <laughs> yes. uh, thanks for unpacking it. Uh, and, and uh, it, it is, a, uh, it is a, a complex question, but it's very, co uh, very important question. Uh, yes, and uh, in the previous uh, uh, discussions, we have seen, and this morning also Rob Thomas from IBM mentioned as well, that uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence, the data science really relies on high quality data. Right, it's uh, 1950s computer scientists, anonymous uh, computer scientists, garbage in, garbage out. Yeah. When we are using artificial intelligence and machine learning, the implications, the impact of bad data multiplies. Multiplies with the training of historical data, multiplies with the, the insights that uh, we are getting out of that. So data scientists today are still spending significant time on preparing the data for the AI pipeline mm -hmm. and the data science pipeline. That's where we shine, because our uh, uh, integrated portfolio accesses the data from all enterprise data stores and cleanses and matches and prepares that in a trusted manner for use for advanced analytics with machine learning, artificial intelligence. Yeah, because the magic of machine learning for predictive analytics is that you build a, a statistical model based on the most valid data set for the domain of interest. If the yes. data is junk, then you're going to be building a junk model that will not be able to do its job. So, you know, Absolutely. for want of a nail, the kingdom was lost. For want of a sink sort, yeah. data <laughs> cleansing and uh, you know, governance uh, tool, the whole AI superstructure will fall down. Yes. You know, that's really Yes, you know, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, great. Good. Well, thank you so much, Tandu, for coming on theCUBE and for, and for giving us a lot, of, a lot of background and information. Thank you for having me. Thank Great you. to have you. Always a pleasure. I'm Rebecca Knight for James Kobielis. We will have more from theCUBE's live coverage of DataWorks 2018 just after this. <laughs>